Okay, we're going to go through this um, paper from last summer in the build-up to the final Edexcel exam of this summer. Uh, last year it was on 14th of June, so they're normally in the same pattern. So this is the uh, Edexcel International A-Level Physics exam. It's the final exam is the Practical Skills exam, which is called Unit 6. And um, the exams are after the weekend, so I thought I'd upload it for you since I was using it with my students as a final practice run through. Okay. By the way, thank you for everyone who tuned in to watch uh, the videos for Unit 5 in your preparation for this week's Unit 5 exam. We broke a new record for my channel. We went to over 2,000 views in that day, in the last day before it, and I got a lot of positive feedback in the comments. So thank you to everyone who's uh, supporting my channel. I'm glad you find it useful, but we do still need more subscribers to make it worth uh, my time to continue with these videos next term and beyond for future students and for you if you're continuing into uh, A-level next year. Okay, so the first question is um, a water tank is shown below. The depth of the water, yeah, they mean the depth at the bottom is kept constant. What they mean is the height of the water is kept constant here. So this is giving it pressure, which causes it to flow. The height h can be adjusted to vary the volume flow. So the volume flow is here uh, of the water moving out of the tube at the bottom. That will be in meters cubed per second. They want you to describe a simple method to determine the flow, the volume flow rate of the water moving out. So basically at this height, how much um, volume flows out per second? Well, it'll be a constant flow rate if you can keep the head of the water filled up. So assuming this is happening, all you've got to do is measure the volume for a given amount of time, and the flow rate is divide the volume by the time. So what does the Mark scheme say? The Mark scheme simply puts it as the either or situation. So that's all you've got to do. The first question is very simple. They do not want to complicate the method. Um, so that's what it's saying. So make sure you read you read the active words, which here is describe a simple method to measure or to determine the volume flow rate. They're not asking you to do an investigation on it. You don't have to change the height or anything. You just do it once and measure it. Okay. Question one a. Question one b. The student then connected the tube to the water device shown below. So it's got a paddle wheel. Here. The water's coming here, causes the paddle wheel to rotate like a water mill. And there's a magnet at the top here, and the above outside the um, plastic tubing or whatever they're using is a coil. Okay, so when water flows in, it rotates. The magnet keeps going round. Every time it rotates once, it makes a, a connection with the coil, which creates a flux linkage, and that produces an EMF. The water flowed through the device. The paddle wheel rotated, making the magnet move past the coil. The student connected the coil to an oscilloscope and a series of pulses was displayed on the oscilloscope as shown below. And the peaks um, to peak distance is the period. So if you can measure it from there to there, that's the period. But if you measure it over two divided by, uh, divided by two, measured over two peaks divided by two, you'll get a more accurate reading, less percentage uncertainty, which is always a better way of doing it. Remember on oscilloscope, the horizontal axis represents time and the time scale in this case was 50 milliseconds per division okay and up and down the vertical is the voltage and the voltage is emf induced by the flux linkage that occurs between the rotation of the magnet each time it goes underneath the coil uh, so we know it's 50 milliseconds per square that's a division is a square calculate the frequency well first you've got to determine the period and across from there to there i made it 6.5 the examiners have put it 6.4, so I'm using their value so you can see what happens. 6.4 divided by 2, so from there to there is 6 and a bit squares, roughly 6.5 squares. They put 6.4. They'll give you a range of error to be able to get the marks. Multiply it by 50 milliseconds, that's times 10 to the minus 3. And once you do that, you'll get the period of 0.16. Okay? Um, and then to calculate the frequency, you've got to use... The equation frequency is 1 over period, so 1 over 0.16 is 6.25 hertz. So you can either give it to three significant figures or to two significant figures uh, if you prefer. Okay, Because obviously you cannot determine 
this that accurately. See, I got 6.5, the examiner got 6.4. So I think 6.3 is probably sufficiently accurate for the three marks. So it'll be divided by reading how many squares it is, and then you working their period out, and then one for doing the calculation and putting it to two or three significant figures. Okay, so that's um, part B. The part C is now the investigation. So now you go into the investigation. Describe how the student could investigate how frequency varies with the volume flow rate of water. Okay, so have a read of that. I'm just going to put up more light in the room. So measure the flow rate and frequency at a fixed height. Yeah, so you could do it for the height that it started at. Then do it, repeat it, the process for different heights. So you're going to measure the flow rate the way we did it in part A. And then you plot a graph of your different flow rates at different heights, the independent variable, against the frequency. Okay, so you're going to plot the flow rate because you want to know how the flow rate affects uh, the frequency. Okay, so you can then plot a graph of the two against each other, the independent variable and the dependent variable. Okay. Um, so then it says the student, um, so you get one mark for each of these lines. One, two, three. The student then disconnected the water tank and the oscilloscope from the, from the flow device. The student placed the water flow device in a river to monitor the flow of the river overnight. Okay. He connected the coil um, of the water flow device to a data logger, because obviously he's doing it overnight. The data logger recorded the frequency of the pulses. Okay. Um, give two reasons, they want two reasons, why a data logger is an appropriate piece of equipment uh, to use for this task. Well, data logger can be used remotely without having to be there at all the time, without the need to constantly monitor it, and the data logger can record a large amount of data and over a large amount of time, so overnight it'll keep all the, re the records going for you. So it's a perfect use of technology. So one for this and one for that will get you two marks. So that's the first 11 points. Question two is about radioactivity. So the absorption of beta particles in aluminium. So you put the aluminium there. There's your beta source. There's the Weigel-Miller tube and the rate meter that's measuring the, the amount. Give two safety precautions for this investigation. Well, obviously, the safety precautions are the same for whatever a radioactivity experiment you do. So I'm just going to show you what the, the wording of the examiners, because it's all to do with the wording. Do not point the source towards anyone's body or towards your own body. Keep a safe distance from the source. They'll accept that. Use the source for a short, as short a period as possible. Yeah. So when I had to do you, when I used to use it in the UK, you had to actually record how often you got the sources out and how long you were using them for in total and then handle with tongs. So one of my students um, whose first language is not English, he says, don't use your hands. Now, whether they'll accept that for handle with tongs, I don't know. It depends on the examiner. Um, so these are the kind of things that you're asked to do. So you can see the answers to 2A and you can see the answer to 2B and the beginning of the answer to the next part. So I'm going to put that there. So if you want to go back and look at the mark scheme, you can as we go through this question. Okay, so that's two. Uh, that's how you get the two marks or any of those two, two of those points. If you if they ask for two and you give three, they'll only mark your first two. I hope you're aware of that. Okay, so now I've lost a bit of focus on my video. Hopefully it will return. It happened the other day. So I might need to do this in two videos. Okay, so that's question one done. Now question two. Um, I'll just try to do the autofocus. If not, I will stop the video and do to questions two, three, and four. It's also partly because it's in the evening here and it's a little dark in the room. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video, record that, and then do the question two, three, and four. Uh, afterwards. Okay, see you in the next video.